Well, this place is looking a little different. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Unturned 2 update video. We've got quite a bit to cover. Nelson has been very busy releasing updates for this game, so let's just get right into it. Now, I think one of the biggest implementations is the melee combat. At the minute, we've just got this axe and nothing else, but this gives us a good demonstration of how melee combat would work in Unturned 2. Now, as you can see, it is already super satisfying. But the biggest change here is that it uses collision-based damage instead of hitscan. And that basically means damage is dealt to the point where the model of the axe hits the model of the target. Whereas in the current unturned, it's basically just dependent on where your crosshair is. Of course, this is far more logical and superior. It means you can really swing and get accurate hits. And as you can see, you do get a secondary crosshair when you're in third person to show where your axe is actually gonna land. Something I found really interesting as well is it actually matters which part of the axe hits the target. So for example, if the handle hits, nothing happens. But if the blade does, you can see we have an impact. Along with that, you can also hit multiple targets. It's gonna be really difficult to try and do that here, but. Hey, there we go. So basically, whatever the blade comes into contact with, it'll do damage to. And you can imagine the type of combos that are now possible with this. Now, of course, there's a lot more features planned for hand-to-hand -hand combat, including special attacks, blocking, and even the ability to smack somebody with your gun. Now, moving on to the elephant in the field, we have the addition of trees. And don't they look beautiful? I mean, this is such an upgrade over the trees in the current Unturned. Now, there is a lot to be added with the trees, but the basic functionality is here. So for example, we can chop down a tree and everything's looking pretty familiar but if we chop down the log you will see there it is it drops a pine cone and with this pine cone you can literally plant a tree anywhere and you can even get rid of the stump as well which is cool because now trees don't have a dedicated spawn point which means there's so much opportunity for changing the entire landscape of a map I mean, you could clear out an entire forest to build a base, or you could even create a forest to hide your base. Now, again, I just want to reiterate that this is not final. Of course, planting trees is going to be a lot more complex in the final game, but this is just to show how it works. Now, the next thing I want to show you is the day and night cycle. This is not some ordinary day and night cycle. And you might be thinking, how can you get excited over the world turning from day to night? Well, let me tell you how. Now, you see, Nelson wanted to make the day and night cycle as realistic as possible. So he casually implemented a full replica of the solar system, which takes into consideration the seasons and time of year, which will affect the orbit and arc of the sun. And all of that is fully linked with the weather system, meaning things like snow will align with the winter solstice. Yeah, he went above and beyond on this one. And look at how dark the nighttime is. This is absolutely terrifying. Sneaking around without night vision is gonna be awful. I mean, can you imagine with the addition of zombies and other players as a threat and you can't even see them? Or just can you imagine this coming from the trees? That would be terrifying. I mean, it looks really cool, but I wouldn't like to be on the other end of it. Now, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I actually really like how dark the night is. I think it just adds to the fact that this is a survival game. We've heard countless times before how Nelson wants to focus on the actual survival aspect of Unturned 2. And if anything, the dark nights just add to that. But regarding the day and night cycle, I'm going to leave a link to the specific devlog post because Nelson goes into far more detail regarding the math behind it all. So if you're interested, you can check that in the description below. It's just incredible the amount of detail that's been put into every aspect of this game. I mean, even down to the saving and loading of levels. Let me show you. So currently in Unturned 3.0, when you save, the game only saves your inventory, the structures built and vehicles. And it forgets pretty much everything else. It forgets all the dropped items on the ground, the trees that were chopped down and all the loot spawns. But in Unturned 2, it will save all of that and more. Right down to the specific position of like targets, for example, it will remember if a window is down or up in a vehicle. So for example, if I, put a window down here uh, maybe put that window down I'll put this blinker on and then maybe I want to drop a first aid kit on the ground along with a couple magazines you know what I'll take my jeans and put them there as well let's also chop down a few trees okay now if you go to the saves tab you can quick save and it will create one or you can just leave the game and it should just save for you okay so now we want to go back to the firing range Everything's back here. The blinkers on, the windows are down, the trees are chopped. 
Now moving on, I just want to talk about controller support a little bit. Controller support has been in the game a while now, but only recently as it receives some TLC. The image system is pretty easy to navigate and playing honestly feels great. Full aim assist support has been added, which will help balance the inaccuracy brought naturally by using a controller. And it's really not overpowered at all. Like I didn't even realize that aim assist was on when I was playing. It just feels very natural. So yeah, I mean, Nelson has pretty much added everything you come to expect from a controller supported game. Now there is still a few things that need ironing out with the controller support, mainly just UI interaction, but for the most part, I can confidently say that this game is getting to the point where you can sit down on a couch and play unturned with nothing but a controller. And in relation to sitting on your couch and playing unturned, split screen support has received some TLC as well. So you can choose to go over and under with the split screen or side by side. And if you've got two monitors, you can even have a whole monitor each when doing split screen. Also, please excuse this monitor on a box that I had to set up for this. Now you might be thinking that split screen games are kind of obsolete nowadays, but it's really nice to be able to just sit and play with friends or family locally without having to make a local server on your network. And finally, I just want to end on optimization because there was a pretty interesting section about it in the devlog. And it's really interesting to see how optimized this game is. It looks like Unturned will now finally be able to handle a lot more objects. As you'll be well aware, especially if you play on my servers, <laughs> If there's a lot of items placed in the same area, it greatly decreases FPS and it causes a lot of lag. And if you've got a complex map with a ton of objects and trees, it just makes it even worse. So I'm really pleased to see that this won't be as much of a problem in this game. Nelson tested a large size map with 35,000 trees and didn't run into any performance issues, which I thought would be pretty nice to mention in this video. So I think this is a good place to stop. I think we've covered pretty much all the big changes since the last update video. And of course, I will leave a link to the devlog, or should I say devlogs, in the description. So if you want to check them out for yourself, have a read you can do that all right well i hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did let me know your thoughts about these updates in the comments and i'll see you in the next one